I hate ads and you do too. Get an ad blocker to avoid that shit. You can donate to my Ko-Fi or get a membership to support my content so I don't have to worry about copyright. Thank you and enjoy the video. Constraining, demoralizing, and wholly unjust. In using windows, you are confining yourself to an existence punctuated by a lack of privacy and a violation of your freedom. If you would like to donate to the Saved from Windows Foundation, you can aid in preventing the suffering of millions around the world. Welcome to Tux Farms, where we raise and take proper care of the finest users around. We let our users do as they please, with no advertisements, no spyware, and none of that proprietary nonsense. At Tux Farms, you're like family, and you'll be given root user upon arrival. If you'd like more information, call now or head on over to TuxFarms.com, where you can get signed up for absolutely free. Linux is pretty robust and reliable, but lots of people are rubbed the wrong way to the point of stranger danger by Linux's way of doing things. Either that, or they're stuck on Windows, doomed to a miserable existence. Unbeknownst to the great wealth of juicy fruits that await them down at Tux Farms. A frequent complaint I see people babbling on about is the terminal. Of course, the terminal is a utility that frequently gets fucking flack for being too complicated, requiring research in order to use effectively, and being the complete antithesis to a graphical user interface. People usually cite the terminal as the reason to avoid Linux, as you are seemingly forced to use it on your system at every turn. But honestly, I mean, I feel inclined to disagree. A factor in this collective misunderstanding of the terminal's place on Linux is complacency. Due to Linux's slow uptake in the desktop market and Microsoft's predatory business tactics, Windows is what we all grew up with, and it is seared into our minds as a result. We are all used to seeing an interface akin to Windows and we are all conditioned to believe that that is the fucking way a computer ought to work. For an ex-Windows user on the fence about using Linux, a huge obstacle to overcome is unlearning this attachment to Windows' UX and workflow. This makes switching to Linux a pretty big ask for most people, as unlearning something and proceeding to learn something entirely new, it's fuck, it's difficult, man. And it takes a lot of dedication. Simply because that's Linux's answer for everything, is to open up a, uh, open up a fucking terminal command. It's bullshit. The other aspect concerning this fear of terminals is the fact that people are accustomed to writing it off as an invasive and unavoidable obstacle to deal with. A pretty big misnomer that is spread across the uninformed masses is calling terminal commands coding. Now for anyone who has even seen what programming looks like, they will immediately fucking guffaw at this complete and utter ignorance. The lever watches me. <laughs> The terminal on Linux is as complicated as you want it to be, but it also holds a ton of utility, and for that reason, the terminal can be as easy as pie if you want it to be as well, because you can quite literally omit it entirely in some cases. On the flip side, you can fine tune and monitor your entire system straight from the terminal if you so desire. Using the terminal may be more difficult at first given the fact that inputting commands and having to research in order to know what to do seems a bit daunting compared to just having the buttons and the tooltips right in front of you. But as you progress, the terminal becomes very much easier than buttons as you won't have to sift through menus upon menus in order to get to what you want. Here's an example. Timmy is not a very storied Linux user, but he knows his way around a few things. Timmy knows that on his distribution, Linux Mint, installing Firefox is as easy as heading to the software center and clicking install in Firefox. And Timmy doesn't manage his files using the terminal, he opts to use a file manager. Timmy is content with his experience on Linux because he's not forcing himself to use the terminal at every turn, and you know what, that's okay. 
Here, instead, we have Tux. Tux is masterful at his craft and uses the terminal for everything. Tux opts to install his favorite terminal-based browser with sudo apt install links and only navigates his system files with the GNU core utils. It's kind of unfair to put the terminal in a box and declare it as some kind of infectious plague that infects your user experience as you can mandate your dependency on it in your system. Now obviously the terminal can only be ignored to a point and there are still many things that you can only do with the terminal. A few programs only work on the terminal or are CLI based, with no alternatives to speak of. The terminal is one of the most important aspects of a Linux system and it should be used in certain situations. But the general use of your system isn't entirely predicated on your terminal skills and it shouldn't be written off as such. How about Eddie Stilson? Can I emulate him? Now there you go, Eddie Stilson. Which one's he? Is he the space shuttle astronaut or the stock car champ? He got to the end of level six and screamed ninja. Bobby, when I say hero, I don't mean some weird Game Boy freak. Another extremely common criticism of Linux is that Linux can't be gamed on. Obviously, gaming is a super popular pastime, and as a result, the shriveling dregs of Windows are going to demand that Linux make good on it. And to be honest, it kind of depends sometimes. If you play games that contain anti-cheat, you're kind of fucked, and your likelihood of getting them working on Linux is spotty. If you play virtually any other game though, you should be good. And if you really are wondering about these two factors, use these websites to check. Another aspect of gaming on Linux is the presence of partial compatibility. There are a fair few games on Linux that work well enough to be playable, but may contain minor issues that can only be solved by fucking around with the game a bit. Tinkering. Usually these issues are pretty small and take modifying a certain setting, but if you're willingly playing a game that is not rated for full compatibility, be prepared to take a measure or two to ensure that it plays seamlessly. Performance-wise, Linux gaming is usually similar or even better than on Windows from my experience. Now, the metrics have a chance of being inflated due to lower overall resource usage in Linux, but my chief example of a dramatic ass increase has always been Minecraft. The difference in frames from Windows and Linux while playing Minecraft was dramatic to me. It was fucking insane, and it was almost unbelievable. As for other games that are obviously more intensive, the increase in Linux was still quite surprising. Using mod managers specific to Windows in order to mod your games is kind of fucking inconsistent on Linux and should be researched heavily before making a definite decision on whether to switch. This is an aspect that I can't really make a super clear verdict on because I don't really mod my games. VR gaming on Linux has been extremely spotty for a while, and I would argue that it is one of the weakest points of gaming on Linux. Steam VR on Linux is essentially abandoned fucking wear, and the only other viable implementation of VR, ALVR, has a lot to be desired. However, it does work, and if tinkered with, works near perfectly. Progress on VR support in Linux is steadily gaining and it should not be too long until Linux VR reaches a point where it can safely be said that it is similar to its Windows counterpart. Another common argument put forth against Linux is that it doesn't have good software support. Now, this is in my opinion Linux's worst issue by far. Those who are on the fence about Linux are quick to cite this as an issue on account of Linux and the greater community. But I mean, to be fucking honest, software support on Linux is entirely at the fault of software developers. The simple rundown is that Windows was popular first, it got all of the software first. Linux, being that it has only just begun to reach wide acclaim outside of the server and hobbyist spheres, is engaged in a game of catch-up, pretty much constantly. Software support will inevitably improve as more content makes people aware of Linux's presence as a genuine force to be reckoned with. However, the support is not all there as it stands right now. Pieces of software that lack support on Linux are CAD programs, many games with anti-cheat and all games with kernel level anti-cheat, productivity software, namely Adobe products, Photoshop 22 purportedly works though, so try it out if you'd like. Music production software is hugely crippled on Linux due to poor VST support and a lack of DAWs present past a few viable open source programs. Certain proprietary software such as mouse and keyboard software or software that manage pieces of hardware like the GoXLR are limited in their compatibility or entirely fucking unsupported. 
However, many inferior but functional implementations are available, so research and try to come to your own conclusion. Overall, Linux is not complex nor hard to use, but it is different. Linux gives you more control over your system and is reasonably familiar to use in a general sense. Linux is fast, reliable, and stable, but it needs work on software compatibility and has a bit of a learning curve if you're switching from using Windows, TLDR. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't die tomorrow. This has been Linux TV.